it's so great to be able to worship with you this morning. Psalm 100 tells us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. So let's worship the Lord this morning. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my soul. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my soul, because you are
sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Oh, my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will. So this morning, instead of 
stop dwelling on our circumstances. And let's just focus on the goodness of God. And we focus on the goodness of God through our praise. So we're going to sing this chorus, Alleluia. And let's just devote our focus, our attention, our thoughts on God. ourselves for the message, please open our ears and open our hearts so that we can receive the word. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, aloha and good morning, church. Hey, before we get into our announcements this morning with Pastor Pat, we just wanted to uh, take and pause and use this moment just to take care of some uh, house business stuff. Um, we've been doing some intentional uh, leaks uh, with our children's ministry, but uh, we just wanted to make it um, a time, a bittersweet time, uh, to announce that uh, Annie Tarones, our children's art uh, director, will be uh, moving back to the mainland uh, December 1st of this year. And uh, it's been quite a journey. Um, her and Joe, her husband, have made a commitment, a five-year commitment to help plant launch and they've been a steady support to our church and just be, she's just been a stellar uh, leader for our not only our keiki but also to all the children's art workers and she's really discipled them so uh, we just wanted to take this moment uh, to let you know and we're extremely uh, sad but also um, confident and trusting that God is 
um, moving forward in the establishment of his kingdom and that uh, God's future uh, for us looks bright for both the Toronises and also for our church. So I'll t turn it over to Renee. <laughs> hey, well, good morning, New Hope. Um, we are, uh, this is, you know, the perfect definition of bittersweet. Um, we are excited and we're looking forward um, to the things that the Lord has. Mm -hmm. And um, although this may seem as a shock, um, this, you know, God is not surprised and this is not shocking to the Lord. And um, we have kind of known that this was coming. And, um, and so we believe, hey, this is the Lord's time. And the great thing is that um, I believe that my mom has done such a great job with the children's ark that, I mean, that's a solid team. And so uh, Children's Ark is still strong and it'll still run. And, um, you know, good job. Well done, um, mom, just for establishing and starting and just, you know, laying the foundation, which I think is probably one of the hardest things to do. And then I think, I believe that it will run smoothly. It will continue to run smoothly because of the work and the foundation um, that you've laid. So thank you. Um, and so, I remember it was like five years ago to the day um, that I called my parents and said, would you come out and help us? And then, uh, you know, I knew they were thinking about it and praying about it. My mom was like, yes, you know, without even thinking. My dad, I don't know, I need to pray. And I said, well, you have two weeks to think about it and let me know. And as I said that, John's like cringing, like, I can't believe you said that to your parents. I'm like, they're my parents. <laughs> um, but this has been really uh, like a dream uh, come true to be able to plant a church, to be able to plant it um, with my mom. And, uh, you know, just what a what an awesome privilege and awesome season. And again, we are super excited about what is to come in, in your guys' life, in your ministry, um, as well as the ministry of what is happening here at New Hope Community Church. So um, thanks again, mom. Um, well done. And yeah, do you have anything that you would like to say? This has been such a precious time mm -hmm. to be able to serve with my daughter and my son-in-law. It's like a dream come true mm -hmm. and God does give us the desires of our hearts mm -hmm. and I do feel like this has a been such a good season and a good time and such a smooth transition I'm excited to see what God's gonna do in the children's lives and in parents lives and in our church's life and I am gonna stay connected mm -hmm. I may be Far away, but I am going to stay connected because I love you guys and I love your kids. And of course, <laughs> I love the Dan Gannons. <laughs> I'm grandma. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for this. Um, thank you for the privilege because it has been a privilege yeah, to serve Amen. alongside you guys and Amen. for you guys. Amen. Hey, well, um, I know COVID has been such an interesting and challenging season, um, but if you uh, love Annie and if you, um, you know, be sure to text her, call her, reach out, say your goodbyes, um, let her know that you love her. Um, we will be having a drive-by send-off. I never heard of that before, but we got to be extra creative in this season. And so um, would you pray about and consider coming out? It's going to be Saturday. November 21st at 5 p.m. at our house. We'll kind of just set up the front yard and you guys can just drive on by and just um, send your best love and wishes to Annie, Auntie Annie, Mom, Grandma, all the names that she goes by. Would you, would you consider um, just coming by and just sending her off with um, as much aloha as you can? Amen. And since God is a God of uh, different seasons, I think to bring closure and... Um, kind of settle our hearts of just the effect of her ministry. You know, our oldest son, Judah, um, as we made the announcement to, the, to him, he made a point and he just kind of had this insight that said, you know, December 1st was when uh, Pastor Pat last year, 2019, mm -hmm. Pastor Pat was welcomed in and prayed into our church. And exactly a year, uh, December 1st, 2020, 
is when we're going to send off um, Annie. Stretch your hands and uh, let's go ahead and pray. Jesus, we love you so much. We thank you, Lord God, for the grace and the gift, Lord, of not only friendship, but Lord, the gift of serving together. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you, God, that whatever is done in Christ's name, Lord, it will surely last. And Lord, the seed that Annie and the Children's Art team have planted, Lord, all through the years, these last five years, whether it's Vacation Bible School, uh, weekly loving and teaching our children, whether it's trunk or treat and all the uh, fall festival that we just did, the seed that has been planted, Lord, I pray, Lord, it would take root in these young people's lives, yes. these children's lives, Lord, that they would know you, that they would love you, Lord, that the next generation of passionate Christ followers, Lord, mm -hmm. would be raised up. So, Father, I just, uh, right now, speak your blessings upon Thank Joe you, and Annie and the Toronto mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Thank you that they are gifts to you, Lord. They are precious gifts to you, precious gifts to us. And, Lord, we just want to send them off in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May your favor shine upon them. May your face be upon them, O oh Lord God, and your peace come. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, what's up, New Hope Community Church? And welcome to service. This is Pastor Pat, and I am going to be doing your announcements today. First, thank you so much for tuning in today, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, and most importantly, our website. And yeah, I believe God has something amazing for each and every one of you out there in this service. Well, um, before we get to those announcements, can you... Um, go ahead and click on the connect tab. Um, we want to get to know you. We want to um, pray for you so you can fill out a prayer request. Maybe you got something amazing happening in your life and you want to share that with this community. Go ahead and fill out that praise report. Also, we have an amazing announcement that we're going to be doing our Thanksgiving um, dinner giveaways. So if you're someone who feels like you want to have a Thanksgiving dinner, maybe you know someone that wants to have a meal that day and they just can't make it or can't afford it. Hey, we want to bless you with that. So if you could fill that out saying, hey, I would like or I know someone that would be greatly blessed by having this meal. Please let us know through our connect card or you can even email us at ohana at newhopecommunity.tv and we would love to get that to you for Thanksgiving. Another announcement is that we have men's ministry or Bible study on Saturday mornings, okay? And this is at 6.30 on Zoom. So if you're interested as a man, or if you are a woman, a wife, and you want your man to read the Bible, then please contact us and we will get you that information, the Zoom um, code and all the details. Of course, you don't have to be a scholar. You just have to have a willing heart and um, to lean into what God has in the Bible and wake up at Saturday at 6.30 in the morning. So uh, another announcement, it's Sunday, right? Today is Sunday. Well, um, at nine o'clock, we have Children's Art Ministry. It's on Zoom. We have an amazing staff. We have amazing um, youth workers or children's art workers um, that get to greet and meet with our kids, teach them the basics of Bibles, and just how to live out as a young little Christian out there in the world um, in this atmosphere. So we have uh, Zoom classes for that. So please contact us again at ohana at newhokuni.tv and we'd love to get that info to you. And then Sunday nights at 5 p.m. on Zoom, you can contact me, Patrick at newhokuni.tv. And we have our youth. That's our sixth graders to um, 12th. And we meet together, we have a message, we sometimes play games, um, and of course, it's the youth, so sometimes we joke and have fun and giggle and all those silly things. But if you are interested in knowing any more information, of course, contact me or the church, fill it out on the Connect card, and we'll love to connect with you. Well, let's get ready for our tithes and offerings. Again, this is um, a moment where we extend our time of worship, right? The time where we are standing in our homes and we're raising our hand and we're singing hallelujah or, and we're praising God. Um, this is an extension of that, that we worship God 
not our money. We worship him, not our finances. And so we want to lift those things up to him and say, this is yours. This is my first fruits and I need you to take it and do something amazing with it. And for those that have been giving so faithfully, thank you because the kingdom is advancing because of you. Again, people are going to receive and be blessed with meals because you sowed into this church and through this church we're able to bless others. It's just an amazing time where God is using people like you to bless other people in need. And maybe you're that person that has received that blessing because you're faithfully giving and saying, God, take this, use it. And in return, he blesses those that give. So let's pray and bless the tithes and offering. And we'll get into our service after this. Dear Lord, thank you so much for um, the tither. Thank you for the tithes. Thank you for those that are willing to take what you've blessed them with, whether it be a lot of money or not that much money. But they're saying, God, may you use this, may you bless this, may you take this and expand your kingdom. Because, God, they believe that you are the greatest thing ever, that your name should be shouted on the mountaintops, that in the quiet places your name should come to be known and to be passed. So may you bless the giver, may you bless the tithe so that it would go out and take your name farther and farther and be on the lips of every person that knows you. Bless the message and may it be something that not only um, transforms us, but mostly just gets to know you more and fall in love with you, God, and that it, we would just be here because of who you are and you alone. We love you. Pray this in your name. Amen. Well, that's our announcements and tithes and offerings. Well, we got an amazing message for you. Check it out. Well, thank you for joining us for our series today on Isaiah. And actually today we'll be in Isaiah chapter 58. We'll be talking about delighting in the Sabbath. Delighting in the Sabbath. Have you been having a hard time finding joy in the season like for real, like hashtag real talk. Like how is your joy tank right now? Maybe you're running low. Maybe you're half empty, maybe half full if you're the optimist. Or maybe you're just running on fumes in joy. And it seems like with the economy, with uh, the political uh, climate around us, with a social unrest, it just it, joy is few and is few and far in between. Um, maybe it's been a while since you experienced joy. Some of us are extroverts; we just need to be around people, and we're kind of shut down at home, isolated. Um, some of us miss going, you know, to church. Most of us, I think, all of us better be missing going to church um, and seeing and worshiping and having corporate worship. And there's just a lack of joy. Well, the good news this morning is that God's Word presents to us how we can experience joy. And I'll, the secret's out. It's by delighting in the Sabbath. So let's turn to our text this morning in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13. If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and turn there. It says, If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, verse 14 uh, is the then clause. So verse 13, there's two if statements. And verse 13, now you have the result. Then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, growing up, uh, when we talk about Sabbath, you know, it's usually confined and it feels like a constriction, like it's legalism, especially when I grew up, my parents, you know, uh, they, they were radically saved and uh, during the time they were, they were growing up and our upbringing, we weren't allowed to watch movies. You know, uh, 
one of my mom's uh, cute little confession when she met Renee is that when my mom was in Bible college, she shared about how she felt so guilty because she snuck out and disobeyed Bible college rules by going to watch Sound of Music. And the worst part is that she felt bad because she enjoyed the movie so much. And, uh, you know, when we think about Sabbath, we think of rules and regulations, but it's actually like the kingdom of God is very opposite. And here is the main point that I want us to write down this morning. Would you write this down in your notes? Sabbath is for free people to find our joy in the Lord. Let me say that again. Sabbath is for free people, meaning there's a context of freedom. And what is the purpose of being free? It's to find our joy in the Lord. So there's two reality, realities about Sabbath. The first is the context of freedom. The reason why there's Sabbath is because there was a context of oppression under Egyptian rule. And secondly, the content of Sabbath is to find joy and delight. If you look at the Ten Commandments in Exodus 32, it's also reiterated in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Look at verse 12. It says this, Observe the Sabbath day by what? Keeping it holy. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor any of the foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Look at this, verse 15. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out into freedom and deliverance of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath. Where we think Sabbath is about rules and legalism oh that's the old that's the ten commandments stuff right actually the sabbath is the crucial is the crucial bridge that connects the ten commandments together the fourth commandment looks back to the first three commandments and the god who rests and at the same time the sabbath commandment looks forward to the last six commandments that concern the neighbor. They provide rest for, from a God who rests and also rest for self and for all members of society. So Sabbath then, it's for free people. It's to enjoy. It's not to enslave you. It's not to uh, restrict you and, and, and you know, constrict you to laws and regulations and do this and thou, thou shall not and thou's. The Sabbath has to do with freedom. Remember that your God delivered you from overproduction, delivered you from uh, overworking. They are to live as free people. 400 years, the people of God were enslaved to Fulfilling quotas, 400 years of unceasing work, over-functioning, unrelenting productivity, non-stop labor. And God says, hey, I'm going to reorient you to a new way of life. You'll be a free people. And when you experience freedom, the way that you know you're free is that you get to seize from your work. And it's a good work. It's a good commandment. You know, it's not something that we have to do. It's something that we get to do, like a for real kind get to do. Uh, so there's four elements to a biblical Sabbath. Would you write this down? The first element is this, stop. Simple, stop. Now the Hebrew word for Shabbat 
uh, it means to cease or to stop. It means a cessation from work. Sabbath day is first and foremost a day of stopping. Now to stop means that we, we stop whatever we're doing. Uh, even though we feel like we need to complete a project, we need to finish a, a term paper, answer our emails, return phone call messages, complete balancing our checkbooks, uh, paying our bills, cleaning the house, doing our chores, to Sabbath means to stop. You see, there's, God worked six days, and after six days, He ceased from His work, and He stopped. Now, if you look at Isaiah chapter 58, you see there it says, If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, which is one of the most literal translations of the Bible, says this, If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath. Did you guys catch that? That's a pretty weird wording, right? If you refrain from trampling on the Sabbath. Now, trampling, uh, if that sounds familiar to you, it's from our Sermon on the Mount series on Jesus and how he says that don't throw your pearls to swine because they will trample on your pearls, not knowing the value, and they don't understand the worth and just going to trample all over it. So, Isaiah says here in Isaiah 58, the talks about true religion. God tells Isaiah, it's not about fasting and prayer. But he says, man, if you uh, refrain from trampling your feet. What's this word, trampling your feet? I think Nehemiah chapter 13 gives us a good idea. Look at verse 15. It says, in those days, I saw people in Judah treading winepress. On the Sabbath, bringing in grain, loading in on donkeys, together with wines, grapes, figs, and all the other kinds of loads. And they were bringing all this into Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Therefore, I warned them against selling food on that day. So what were the people of God doing in the day of rest? As they're supposed to be free and enjoy freedom? They were treading their feet to on a wine press now here's a picture of a wine press wine press in ancient israel and what they were doing is that they were pressing and stepping down and trampling their feet and god says to isaiah it's like these people if they just stop cease from their work stop striving and laboring and working and cease from that out and enjoy the sabbath call it a delight i'm gonna they will find the joy of the lord to stop means um stop from work or anything that feels like work so for a literal 24-hour period cease from your regular work Anything that drains you, like checking your emails or responding to emails, if that drains you on your Sabbath day, you need to stop that. Uh, Sabbath is not your day off. It's not a day off. A day off is to run errands. It's to go to groceries. It's to get your safety check, right? Let's go to City Mill, take care of household chores, your honeydew list. That's what your day off is for. But a Sabbath day is different because a Sabbath day is a cessation. It's stopping from work or what you consider as work. So for me, what that looks like is Sunday night, as much as I can, not unless it's an emergency, um, you know, I don't check my emails. I don't respond to emails. I don't have visitations. Um, like I don't like working on the yard and you know, watering the plants and that doesn't really fill me up. So things that, um, washing the car, whatever it is that you find as laborious and work, you consider work, stop from that. Secondly, is to rest. 
rest. Look at verse uh, 13. Be, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day. Why were they trampling their feet? Because they were pressing grapes and they wanted to make money. Instead of making that money, getting that overtime, doing extra hours, God tells them to not only stop, but to rest. Once we stop the Sabbath, God calls us to rest. And God rested after His work in creation. And we are to do the same. Um, and resting... It answers the question of what stirs your affection for Christ? What fills your tank? So, a Sabbath is twofold, right? What drains your tank? Whatever it is that drains your tank, you push the brakes on that. But whatever fills your tank in resting, that's what we need to do. There's an old uh, rabbinic uh, saying that says, those who work with their minds should Sabbath with their hands. And those who work with their hands should Sabbath with their minds. So in other words, if you, are, if you work in an office all day and you're in a cubicle, nice air-conditioned office, and you're, pr you're filling out Excel spreadsheets all day, um, analyzing data um, in front of the computer all day. On your day of Sabbath and resting, uh, go out and go for a walk. Right? Go to the mountains on the hike. Sit under a tree and let your mind rest. If you work outside, if you work construction, and if you're um, out on the field, as it were, uh, stay at home. Take a long nap. Read a book. Um, have an extended time of devotion. See, when you rest, we make a conscious effort not only to rest from our work or what we consider work, but rest from physical exhaustion. Rest from hurriedness. Rest from multitasking, from being competitive and competitiveness and worry. Rest from decision making. It takes mental discipline to put an end and to seize and rest from um, catching up on errands, uh, talking too much, uh, technology and machines and our phones and our tablets. We need to rest from that. And let me give you this warning, okay? If you don't take a Sabbath, if you don't take the Sabbath, the Sabbath will take you. Let me repeat that. If you do not take a Sabbath, the Sabbath will take you. Because Jesus, according to Psalm 23, is the Good Shepherd and he causes us to lie down in green pastures. We're squirrely, we buck around, we like to run around and do stuff for busybodies. We like to stray and walk around and, and do our own thing, Isaiah says. But the Good Shepherd, he causes us, in Hebrew that's a PL, PL stem verb, meaning it's a causative verb. In other words, that God causes us to lie down in green pastures. You know what a shepherd, a good shepherd has to do sometimes for a sheep that keep wandering off? He has to break their legs and let them sit by green pastures. It's just like humility. The Sabbath is just like humility. Either you choose to be humble or God will humble you. In the same way, either you choose to Sabbath and rest in God or God will cause you to Sabbath. Just last week we hear we heard of another pastor 
that, that morally fell, pastors that are, are burnt out, ministry workers that are just overworking, especially this during this COVID season, this pandemic, um, trying to do online and engaging and trying to keep the attendance up and keep the tithes up and the nickels and the noses and they're not resting. So if you don't take the Sabbath, the Sabbath will take you. Third is delight. So for free people, we're free to stop from our work. We're free to rest and we're free to delight. Uh, look at Isaiah 58, 13. B, it says, if you call the Sabbath a delight. And this is the second of the if statements. If you rest, if you stop, if you call the Sabbath a delight. The third component to biblical Sabbath revolves around delighting in what God has given us. Um, the Hebrew phrase of creation is that it was good. That it implies that God um, had a sense of joy, of completion, and wonder, and play. Um, because of the way pleasure and delight has been so distorted in our culture, many of us as Christians, man, we struggle with a sense of receiving joy and pleasure. But on our Sabbath, we are called to enjoy and delight in creation and God's gifts. We're to slow down, pay attention to God, pay attention to our food, pay attention to the sounds of the beach, pay attention to a rainbow, pay attention to the sunshine, uh, taste the, the common gifts of God. What fills your tank? What do you delight in? So on our Sabbath day, which is on a Monday, uh, what we do is, um, you know, we let the kids sleep in and, uh, it's their one day a week where they don't have to make their bed. Actually, they never make their bed. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, Sabbath day, uh, we don't nag them and we don't force them to make our be their beds because it's, they consider it work. So I'm like, okay, Monday, you don't have to make your bed. Um, and as a family, we go. Uh, what do we delight in? Uh, we, del we love long drives. And what that lo usually looks like for us is that we go to either... Uh, and a point or we go to uh, Makaha or Yokohama Bay or we go to the North Shore, Haleiwa, uh, Waihewa and we um, before we make our trek there we stop by Harvest harvest Bread in Kahala and we pick up this delicious manna from heaven it's a cinnamon bread with cinnamon butter oh it's so good it's so the once a week that we have bread together, we get Starbucks, um, and we just enjoy things. As he always gets the um, bacon uh, egg omelet at Starbucks, and then, you know, the kids, they get green tea frap, and we just treat ourselves. Hashtag treat yourself. We just, what, what fills up our tank? So we have that, and we just drive. Sometimes we put on worship music. Other times we're just quiet and we just contemplate. Other times the kids listen to Adventures in the Odyssey. And uh, when we arrive there, we go to the beach. I don't like the water that much, so I usually stay under the shade and just kind of chill. When we go to Canada Point, uh, two weeks ago we went to Peacock Flats. We went off-roading. That fills my tank, you know, kind of feeling like we're in the outdoors. Um, and at night, or when we're done, we drive back, uh, we take a nap, we rest, and then uh, Monday night we have a date night. And that's our time to just, um, you know, enjoy, catch up on things. So the Sabbath, is, it's a delight. It invites us to a healthy play. And lastly... The fourth component of Sabbath is to contemplate. Look at Isaiah 58, verse 13. See, it says, And if you honor it by not going your own way, 
and not doing as you please or speaking in idle words. So the final quality of biblical Sabbath, of course, is contemplation of God. The Sabbath is always holy to the Lord. The Sabbath is to honor God, is to seek God first. It's not uh, vegging out and binge watching season one and season two of Mandalorian, right? But it's, it takes its time to contemplate upon God. Throughout the Jewish and Christian history, Sabbath has included worship. Um, you know, Sunday is a great day you know, to Sabbath and take that time to contemplate God. Contemplate about your relationship with God. Think about the goodness of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, so if, if I could give you some practical advice, you guys, Saturday is, you know, it could be your day of errands, of running around, going to kids' games, soccer, driving around, and um, what you think to be normal work. But a day of Sabbath is maybe you have an extended devotion, you spend some time in silence and solitude. Now, you could be stuck at home and your kids are there and, you know, there's distance learning. You're like, well, Pastor John, what do we do about that? It's like, well, maybe on the day of Sabbath, you could take turns. Maybe in the morning, your, uh, your spouse or your wife can go out and she could have her coffee time. She could go on her walk. She could go to the beach uh, with a book and just kind of chill and hang out. And you guys take turns, and um, and after that, in the afternoon, you could take your turn. Maybe for you, it's like watching Sunday night football, whatever it is. But find time to to stop, to rest, to enjoy, but to contemplate about God. Don't just go your own way, doing as you please, but contemplate and honor God in your Sabbath. Cultivate a heart of gratitude. Look forward to eternity with God. So if we do these things, stop, rest, um, meditate, or contemplate on God, enjoy what happens. Look at verse 14. Then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride and triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. If this time has been just downright depressing for you, if you're weary, if you're heavily laden, would you go to the Lord of Sabbath and Jesus and would you find your rest? If you honor the Lord, if you take these four elements of Sabbath, God promises that when you do these things, you will find your joy in the Lord. You, you will triumph. You will ride in triumph. You'll feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. And the Lord, you know, he says, hey, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, that God speaks with authority, that he's designed the Sabbath to rejuvenate you. To just think about that word recreation that you're recreated when you Sabbath man food tastes better music sounds sweeter life is more beautiful when you think and contemplate and enjoy Christ and I'll just close with this quote Sabbath is the most practical outworking of the gospel I can do nothing Yet God is pleased. And this is the gospel. That God loves us as we are. That we don't have to work. You know, in the creation account, the first day of human existence, after God created Adam and Eve on day six, the first day that they were created, they what? Rested. It's just like Jesus' baptism, right? That in his baptism, 
This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. A voice comes down from heaven on the son and the Holy Spirit descends on him like a dove. And from that place of belovedness, then Jesus um, fasted for 40 days. Then he performed miracles. Then he did his public ministry. He didn't do his public ministry. Then he was anointed as a beloved son. It's like, no, from the place of being beloved and accepted, then he did his ministry. So it is with us this morning. If your joy tank is running low, if you're um, kind of melancholy and you're going through maybe a just a period of depression and sadness, I encourage you to Sabbath in the Lord this morning. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for who you are and what you've done. And I just pray right now, Lord, that we, your people, would turn and we would run to you. Lord, I pray that we would consider Sabbath as a delight. Lord, you've freed us from the bondage of finding our identity in work, finding our worth in what we do and how hard we work and our accomplishments. But Lord, it is through Sabbath, Lord, that we, is a foretaste of the gospel, that we can just be. Lord, we're human beings, that human doings. So I just pray, Father, that we, your people, could as we finish 2020, this hellacious year, God, of just uh, turmoil, I pray that we would find our joy and our rest in you. We love you. We worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, we appreciate you for tuning in, worshiping with us here in God's Word. Don't forget to Sabbath, all right? We have youth group tonight for 5 p.m. for all you junior high and high school students. We have men's Bible study every Saturday, 6.30 a.m. via Zoom. And uh, we're going to have our drive-by blessing for Annie as she um, heads off to her next season on Saturday, November 21st at 5 p.m. We love you guys. Have an amazing week. Take care. <laughs>